Yo, Nakun here. And in today's video, I want to show you this effect. When you hover on your background, you do see this tile effect. And I do think it's pretty cool. It adds a bit of character to your website. It moves it from just being a plain boring background to something that has a bit of life. And to make this, we are going to go into Figma. And from Figma, we are going to bring what we create in Figma, bring it into breakdowns, and then eventually we are going to use element hype so these are the three things that you do need element hive breakdance builder and then figma so first let me take you into figma and show you how we are going to create this so the tiles over here that you do see we are going to go into figma and over here i do have a frame and my frame is 1920 by 1080 you can do it whatever size that you want but i do think that 1920 by 1080 is the best size and what i'm going to create is i'm going to create like little tiles over here so this is a towel there's one towel right so let's say this is 100 by 100 and i do want to duplicate that a few more but i've seen that the best size that you do actually want to use is, is 100 by 88.29 so this is the size that you can use to create your tiles so this is one tile and then we are just going to duplicate it a few more. So let's do, so I duplicated it. I'm going to push it to the side and then I'm going to select the two of them and then frame it. And then for the space in between, I'm just going to give it one pixel. All right. And the next thing is I'm just going to du keep duplicating this. So I get to the very end of it. All right. So there's the very end and when I hold and select this you can see that we are 1918 so we need two more to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to unframe it and then i'm going to group it right and then i'm just going to make sure that i pull it to the end and then we have 1920. all right so that is good the next thing that i'm going to do is i want to duplicate this a few more down so this is one i'm going to select the two of them and then frame it and I'm going to make sure that the gap in between is also just one, right? And the next thing I'm going to do is just keep duplicating it down. And then we do have something more like this. But you can see that there is space down below. We are going to remove that space by clicking on each of these. And then I'm, we are going to ungroup them. But before we do that, let's make sure that we don't have the frame on or else it to turn into what we just saw there. So I'm grouping it. And then if I group everything together, you can just hold down and just drag it down. So everything is dragged down. So 1920 by 1080. So after doing this, your next thing is to make sure that you have colored it the way that you do want. Um, for it to look a bit more seamless, you can make sure that the color that you use on your gradient Sorry, the color that you use on these tiles are the same color that you're going to use for your background when you get into development. Um, you can also use a gradient on this. So to use a gradient on the group, we are going to make sure that I'll right click on it and then I'm going to flatten it. So after flattening it, now when I apply a color, it's going to apply it to the entire vector. So let's click on here and then we're going to go into gradient and we are making sure this is a gradient. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this to the top and bring it all the way to this corner. Hold here to bring it all the way to that corner. And then the color that I'm going to choose here is a kind of like, like a, a deep black. And then the last one is also a deep black. And in the middle, the 50%, I am going to choose something that is a bit more, something more like this, right? Okay. And then we also we can also click here and then when we even click there, we can bring this one also here. And so we have something a bit more like this. So that's the color that I'm going for. After that, I'm just going to select the vector. After selecting our vector, we are going to export it. So let's click on export. And over here, we have PNG. We do not want to export it as PNG. The reason is because of size. PNG is going to make this really huge. So let's change from PNG to SVG. Because what we do have here is just lines with colors. So exporting as SVG is a better way. So let's click on export. And over here, what we are going to do is we're going to give it a name called, let's say, background and then vector, right? Or vector, whatever name you want to give it. So I've finished creating the tiles.
All right, the next thing I want to do is I want to go into my development. And over here, I've already created this. But what I'm going to do is I am going to remove what we created, which is this. I'm going to remove it. So you can see that our tile is gone. This is our background. Don't mind whatever that we do have here. This is just content for fun. So this is our section, right? And we do have our gradient background color over here. You can make it into any color that you want. So from here, what we're going to do is I'm going to add a div. So the div is going to hold the image. You might be asking, why don't we apply the vector directly as a background image? When you do that, it becomes impossible for you to see the animation. And also when it comes to Element Hive, what we, what we need to use in Element Hive is not available in the section. It is only available in devs and every other element. That is why we want to make sure that we apply this div over here. So we added our div. The next thing that you also have to keep in mind is you want to make sure that your section is in full width. So let me go into size over here. So I have this on full width and then I also have this on view port. So you can do whatever that you want with the size. But if you want this to cover the entire width, you have to make sure that it is on full width. That is for the section. So for the dev, I'm going to click on it too. And then I am going to go into container. Also want to make sure that this is 100%, right? And then for height, I also want this one to also be 100%. So it's going to cover an entire like viewport that is left. All right, so this is good. Um, the next thing that I want to do is I want to add an image to this dev. Instead of applying the image as background image, we want to apply the image as the normal image inside the div. The reason is because, as I said earlier on, when you apply it as a background image, you might not be able to see the tiles the way that we saw it in the front end. All right, so this is our div. Let's add an image inside. And then we are going to click on here and then go to and this is what we just created. I'm just going to add it over here. So we do have the tile that we have created. And this is just 71 kilobyte. All right. So we did that. And then our tile says in here, you can see the lines over there. All right. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that this tile is covering the entire width and also is also covering the entire height. So we're going to go into image and then for width, I am going to change this one to percentage. Make sure that this one is 100%. Correct. And then for height, we want to make sure that you can use um, SVH. So you can just click on SVH and then give this one 100% or 100 um, SVH. And then for the object fit, you want to change this one to cover. So it will cover um, the entire width that you do see over here. All right, so we do have something more like that. Right, the next thing is that we want this one to go behind our thing over here. So we want it to cover this, but we want it to go over, um, to go underneath here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this and then go into, come back over here and then set for position. One place on position, absolute. So make sure this is position, absolute. So it goes behind there, just like that. And then you can also make sure that your index is fixed. So our index, we can give you this one index of one. So it is now behind it. All right. So let's save it. And then we can preview this in the front end. So this is what we do have now. now when you have it, you don't see anything because we haven't applied the color behind it. All right. So going back into our, our design, what I do want is which one is. So this is the one. Let's give it a name. So we are not forgetting. Let's call this one and spotlight right i just wanted a good a name for that so that is spotlight and we know that we're dealing with that so after doing everything that i've shown you go into the advanced mode over here by clicking on this gear icon and you want to come down to element hive pro click on that and then here you want to go into mouse effect click on the edit icon and then you want to click on spotlight enable spotlight all right so after doing that you can just add a color over here so let's add a color of let's say um this 
this color, right? This purplish color. All right, so we just added a color. I'm just gonna save it so we can see how that looks and feel. All right, so you can see that the color is now showing behind it. It is not the, the biggest color, but you can see that, you can see what we're doing. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is go back into our design. Let's remove the old one. And then what I want to do is I want to go in here and then click on the image. I want to add another spotlight. This one just to the image. And I'm going to click on mouse effect and then click on spotlight and enable spotlight. Let me drag this over here. And for this, I want to just give it a color of white. And then the size, we can give it a size of like 500. And for opacity factor, I'm going to drag this one to 0 0.1. And for proximity, I'm going to give it an 80 pixels. All right. And then we can just save it. And then to the front end, let's refresh again. So now we do have something more like that. Now it feels a bit more that it is a bit visible than the old one, but we do have something more like this where we've created this kind of like tile effect. So it is very simple. It is very straightforward. And we can go back into uh, no more spotlight by clicking on this there and then going into the mouse effect let's drag this over here we can add a bit more adjustment we can give this one like 300 pixels and i think that is good and we can just save it and let's refresh again so we do have something more like this so the spotlight is a bit bigger than previously seen so if you're looking to create the spotlight that you've seen on awards.com or you've seen all over the internet in breakdowns this is how you do it it can take you probably like five minutes if you're not talking um yeah you can just go into figma as i showed you create a tile export it as svg don't do um png because png might be a bit too big so export it as what you want but make sure that it is something that has you can see um the alpha channel so that when you hover on them, the alpha channels will pick out the light that you are hovering with. So this is how you create that. My name is Nyakum. If you did like this, please give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I'll be so glad if you did subscribe to the channel to help it grow so that more people will see the video so that I'll be able to create more videos for you. And if you are looking to get Element Hive, or breakdance i am going to leave a link down in the description for you to go and check them out thank you for watching i'll catch you on the next one